All right, good morning, uh, and welcome to the 70th anniversary of the Korean War Veterans Armistice Day event. I'm Colonel Retired Paul Kirchhoff, Executive Director of the Missouri Veterans Commission. Thank you for everyone in attendance here today uh, to help us honor and celebrate Missouri's Korean War veterans. A sp special thank you to Brigadier General Charlie Hausman, uh, Department of Public S uh, Safety Deputy Director Kevin Bond, Missouri Veterans Commission Commissioner Steve Maples, uh, Colonel Retired John Clark, Chaplain Colonel Moore, and the Missouri National Guard for helping us with our pinning ceremony today. After today's event, please uh, join us on the third floor rotunda for light refreshments and our resource fair. The ceremony will begin with, uh, this ceremony will begin with the posting of the colors by the Smith Cotton JROTC, followed by the national anthem sang by Jamie Talkin and an invocation by Chaplain Colonel Patrick Moore. Please post the colors. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or the Would you please join me in prayer? Oh God, our hearts are united today as we gather to honor the living, remember the fallen, and ask for your sustaining presence in our lives. 
Lord, we remember over two million Americans left their homes and families, called away by a president from Missouri to serve in a land far away for girls and boys, women and men in South Korea who simply desired honor and freedom and peace. Show us, O oh God, how to honor the legacy of those who served in this conflict in the way that we live our lives as we seek the common good, lift others up in our words and deeds and even sacrifice our resources for strangers and the vulnerable who simply desire to live in peace. For this is the example Korean veterans have shown us. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. It's in thy name we pray, amen. Go ahead and please take your seats. Thank you, Chaplain Moore, for that beautiful prayer. Uh, you know, Jamie, I, I think whenever, every time I hear her sing the national anthem, it gets better and better and better every time. Very, very nice. And also, thanks to the uh, uh, Smith Cotton Jarrow TC. They do a fantastic job. Uh, very impressed uh, with, our, with the future. Our next speaker is Colonel uh, John Clark who will be presenting the POW MIA Remembrance. John Clark was born in 1940 in, in Columbia, Missouri, and he was commissioned through the Air Force ROTC program at the University of Missouri, Columbia on June 5, 1962. Clark graduated from undergraduate pilot training and was awarded his pilot's wings at Reese Air Force Base, Texas in August 1963. He next flew the C-131 Samaritan Transport transports with the 12th Aeromedical Transportation Squadron at McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey from October 1963 to June 65. Clark then re uh, completed RF-4C Phantom II combat crew training and received and served at the RAF Alconbury, England from June 65 to October of 66. He began flying combat missions in Southeast Asia with the 11th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron at Udorf uh, Udorn Royal Thai Air Force Base, Thailand, in October 1966. On March 12, 1967, Captain Clark was forced to eject over North Vietnam and was immediately captured and taken prisoner and taken as a prisoner of war. After spending 2,170 days, that's almost six years, in captivity. He was released during Operation Homecoming on February 18, 1973. He recovered from his injuries at the U.S. Air Force uh, Medical Center at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois, and then went back to college through the Air Force Institute of Technology assignment at University of Missouri-Columbia in October of 73. Clark then served as an instructor pilot at Vance Air Force Base, Oklahoma, before leaving active duty on June 10, 1977. He spent time in the Missouri Air National Guard before joining the Air Force Reserve. Air Force Reserve, and he retired from the Air Force on January 12th, 1992. Colonel John Clark. Thank you very much. Well, I will have to say that one of my great pleasures in speaking is to be able to present the missing warrior table. And today is no exception. I want to thank everybody for being here. And, um, and, and, and so let us present the table. I'd like to call your attention to this small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor near the podium and our flags. Today we call it the missing warrior table. Jennifer Henderson, Petty Officer Third Class, will be joining us to light the candle at the proper time, and she represents 
the magnificent role our young women play in today's armed forces. This table is set for one. That symbolizes that members of our armed forces are missing. They're not in our ranks. They are referred to as prisoners of war and missing in action. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones, their families, today or tonight. So we join to get together to pay our humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. Now this table is set for one. It's small. It symbolizes the frailty of one prisoner alone against their suppressors. The tablecloth is white. It's symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their countries, their nation's call to arms. The single red rose in the vase signifies the blood they have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. The rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the, who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us today. A slice of lemon on the plate it reminds us of their bitter faith, fate, their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of their families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot commune with us today. And the chair is empty. They're not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home away from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. Thank you, Jennifer. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander for all of our comrades that will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember, let us never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. This has been my pleasure. Thank you, Colonel Clark. I, I've, I've uh, been part of that ceremony many times in my life, but uh, knowing you and your experience, that, that really makes it, uh, it, it, it's moving. And thank you for, for coming and joining us here. I honestly can't uh, uh, 
expressed what an honor it is to be here today celebrating our Korean War veterans. Before I begin, I want to thank uh, the Missouri Veterans Commission team, particularly Amy uh, Packard and Melissa Skinner, for working so hard to make this, uh, this ceremony possible. In addition to honoring our veterans in events such as this, the Missouri Veterans Commission manages seven long-term care facilities, five state cemeteries, and a veteran service officer program that assists veterans and their families seeking benefits that they've earned through their service. It's an honor to work for an organization such as this and be part of the rich history Missouri has uh, for caring for our veterans. I'd also like to thank uh, Governor Parson for his leadership in supporting veterans issues and the much needed programs in the state. Lieutenant Governor Kehoe for his continuous support of Missouri veterans and for also allowing us to use his office in the basement as we work to provide veterans with wills and other legal documents free of charge. The Missouri National Guard uh, for providing soldiers and airmen to pin the, these heroes with their commemorative lapel pins and also Capitol Police and Chief Schwartz for their assistance, their continued assistance here at the Capitol. The Korean War started at dawn on Sunday, June 25, 1950, with an aggressive and ferocious attack by nearly seven divisions of elite Korean troops. Their goal was to conquer the southern half of the peninsula in three weeks. Instead, what, follows, what followed was three years of violent armed conflict, civilian starvation, war crimes, the threat of nuclear warfare. This was no police action. This was modern warfare with all the tools of modern warfare, machine guns, aerial bombing, artillery, tanks, and much more. But on July 27, 1953, 70 years ago today, at 10 o'clock in Panmunjom, the generals signed their names to the armistice laid out before them. After three years of death and devastation, the weapons of war no longer pierced the night air. Along the front, Men, men and women celebrated quietly, and like countless survivors before them, thought to themselves, thank God it's over. In the end, it is estimated that 33,000 Americans died in the war, with another 105,000 wounded. The South Koreans lost 415,000 with 429,000 wounded. Officials put the North Korean and Chinese losses at roughly 1.5 million killed. The Korean War is often called the Forgotten War. And unfortunately, that moniker still, still rings true today. I recently went to a bookstore, uh, their US military history section, or area, and I found a section for World War I, another for World War II, but then it skipped to Vietnam War. There was no section for the Korean War. While uh, the Korean War may, not, may be forgotten by some, I don't think anyone gathered here will ever forget it. I would also contend that the people of South Korea will never forget it. How can they when they, they see the conditions their relatives north of the 38th parallel, parallel are forced to endure day in and day out? Today, Seoul is an economic giant led by a democratically elected president. In contrast, Pyongyang is an economic ruin held up only by desperate measures by their, and by their neighbors to the north. It is ran by a despotic erratic and reckless dictator, a man who values his pursuit for power over prosperity and welfare of his own people. Today, South Korea is a free country with a vibrant culture and a powerful military, an ironclad ally and a treaty partner, a close friend of the United States and a key anchor for peace and stability in the region. To all who fought in Korea, this is your lasting legacy. Certainly a legacy to be proud of. Despite this great legacy and extreme sacrifices on the altar of freedom, Korean War veterans didn't return to ticker tape parades and celebrations in their honor. America was war weary, war weary following World War I. The nation collectively just wanted to move on and forget about the war, forget about the trauma and suffering that is endured in the pursuit of freedom. As one veteran put it, we just came home, took off our uniforms, and we went to work, and that was about it. Our veterans deserve better. You deserve better. You deserve to be recognized for your sacrifices and thanked for a job well done. Sacrifices that only, uh, that only those who served with you truly know and understand. 
Many sacrifices were made in the freezing withdrawal out of the Chosin Reservoir. Others suf suffered intensely through hand-to-hand, -hand, hand -hand, foxhole-to-foxhole fighting at Heartbreak Ridge, the Punch Bowl, and Pork Chop Hill. Today's ceremony is a small token of appreciation and recognition for your sacrifices. It may be a little late in coming, but once again, Missouri is showing our appreciation for our veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans, thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for all you have done to ensure the, ball, the bell of freedom continues to ring throughout the world. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Charlie Hausman, the Deputy Adjutant General for the Missouri National Guard. Brigadier General Hausman is a native of St. Joe, Missouri. Man, I didn't even know that. Uh, in St. Joe, Missouri, he received a Bachelor of Science degree in Aviation Technology from the University of Central Missouri in 1991 and a Master of Science degree in Aviation Safety from the University of Central Missouri in 93. He completed a Master of Arts degree in National Security and Strategic Studies through the United States Naval War College in 2015, which is much easier than the Army War College version. <laughs> Brigadier Gen General Houseman enlisted in the Army Reserves in 1988 following basic training. He entered the Reserve Officer Training Corps program at the University of Central Missouri and joined the Missouri National Guard as a member of Company A, 110th Engineer Battalion. Upon branch transferring to aviation in 93, he served in many staff positions and commanded, the, uh, and commanded at the company, battalion, and brigade level. Brigadier, Brigadier General Hausman deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan multiple times, most notably as a commander of the 35th Combat Aviation Brigade in 2018-2019. He currently serves as the Missouri National Guard full-time, in the Missouri National Guard full-time as a Deputy Adjutant General. Brigadier General Houseman resides with his wife, Julie, in Jefferson City, and they have two adult children, Alex and Libby. Brigadier General Houseman. Good morning, and thank you for inviting me here today. On behalf of Major General LaVon Compton, the Adjutant General, I'm proud to represent the soldiers and the airmen of the Missouri National Guard at this event. I also want to take a moment to uh, thank Director Kirchhoff. What he failed to mention is uh, I did go to the University of Central Missouri. I got commissioned through their ROTC program with Second Lieutenant Paul Kirchhoff. We were commissioned together. And yes, he knows that I actually did get a degree. And I also want to uh, recognize Colonel John Clark. Uh, I will echo the comments uh, from Director Kirchhoff. I've seen this ceremony many, many times, but I thought this morning's was exceptionally poignant, so thank you. I also want to thank the Veterans Commission for the invitation to speak and participate in this meaningful occasion. And I want to thank the Veterans Commission team that organized this event. What an amazing turnout that we have here today. I know that these events take a lot of planning and people and extra hours, and you all have done an amazing job, and it looks like it's been done exceptionally well. So to wherever you are out there, thank you. I also want to welcome and thank all of our Korean War veterans and their families and their friends who are here with us today. Thank you for your service and for your sacrifice to our nation. Our motto in the Missouri National Guard is one team. We love this motto because no one service member does this alone and it certainly takes a team to serve, support, and today to honor our veterans. It's important that we also remember to honor the families who stood strong while their loved ones were away, whose resilience and continued dedication to their loved ones shines through as an example of quiet, selfless service. Today we're here to observe the 70th anniversary of the armistice that brought a cessation of hostilities on the Korean Peninsula and to celebrate the freedom that our service members fought so fiercely to preserve. It's an important day, not only to commemorate the end of hostilities that caused tremendous human suffering, but also to honor and celebrate the service that so many brave men and women gave to the United States 
And for some of you, this recognition is long overdue. As Director Kirchhoff mentioned, the Korean War is often referred to as the Forgotten War, a war fought by brave Americans to whom honor and duty were paramount and whose service was often not recognized. The courage and the fortitude that was exemplified by our Korean War veterans is to be admired and celebrated. It set the standard for future generations of service members. For me and for my family, the Korean War and those who served in it are near and dear to our hearts. My father-in-law, Ralph Mayer, who's joining us today, is a former Navy electrician's mate who served in Korea in 1952 on the destroyer USS Rogers with the US Navy. Our family appreciates his stories about his experiences in the Navy, and what stands out most is how those years, while they were only a short portion of his life, had an enormous impact on his future. His experiences helped form who he became, and he has never forgotten them or the people that he served alongside. We also know that Korean War veterans, servicemen and women, endured some of the most difficult and taxing conditions. They faced incredible risk and danger every day, all in the hope that the world would be a better place when they returned home. They made that hope a reality for millions of people on the Korean Peninsula through their actions and their sacrifices. Today, let us use this armistice anniversary to remember and honor the brave service members who put their lives on the line for our country. Let us honor their courage and commitment by showing appreciation for their service. One way that we can do this is with the aid of veteran service organizations. And there's several veteran service organizations who have joined us today. You may have seen them as you were coming in, and there's more upstairs on the third floor. These organizations exist to ensure that veterans get the recognition they deserve and that they can access the benefits that will help make their lives better. We urge you to support these organizations in your communities whenever you can. Another way that we can honor our veterans is by maintaining a strong national memory of the Korean War. We must never forget the tremendous sacrifice of our service members and their families so that their courage and strength can be a lasting legacy. As I conclude my remarks this morning, I'm reminded of a quote from President Ronald Reagan, who said that freedom is a fragile thing and it's never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by way of inheritance. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation, for it only comes once to a people. As we remember the 70th anniversary of the Korean armistice, we recognize that we cannot forget that freedom is not free. To all those in attendance today who come to celebrate Missouri's veterans, we appreciate your support and participation. It's an honor to have the opportunity to be here today and stand side by side with you as we recognize those who fought for freedom. Thank you. Thank you for those, uh, those excellent words, and, and uh, now for the reason we're all gathered here today. The 70th anniversary Korean War Veterans Armistice Day pinning ceremony. On July 27, 2019, President Donald Trump declared today National Korean War Veterans Armistice Day. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. In 1953, the Korean War Armistice Agreement ended more than three years of brutal fighting against communist expansion and tyranny on the Korean Peninsula. On Korean War Veterans Armistice Day, we have gathered to honor and recognize the brave patriots who secured freedom and democracy in the Republic of Korea. At this time, I will ask all Korean War veterans who are able to please stand. If you're not able to stand, whenever the pinners come in front of you, if you'll just raise their hand, get their attention, we'll make sure that we pin you as well. Uh, our civic leaders, uh, uh, military members, 
and leaders from the Department of Public Safety, Missouri National Guard, and Missouri Veterans uh, Commission will, will now pin our Korean War veterans with on behalf of a grateful nation. Thank you for your service. Thank you for what you've done for our nation in the name of freedom. At this time, we ask Chaplain Moore to close our ceremony with a benediction. Would you stand as you're able? And would you join me in prayer? O oh Lord, send us out to do all the good we can in all the ways we can, to all the people we can in every place we can, as long as we ever can. It's in thy strong and mighty name that we pray today. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Moore. This concludes today's ceremony. Please join us on the third floor rotunda for light refreshments and a resource fair. If you signed up for the Will Clinic that's happening in the basement of the Capitol, you should have received information from Scotty Allen about your appointment. With that, uh, will remain standing for the retirement of the colors. Thank you everyone for being here today as we honor these heroes. That's the end of the ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>